In this video, we are going to discuss the components of a typical quadcopter. Every drone will have a frame. This frame kit has four arms and two plates to attach the kit together. The aircraft will need a power source. This drone will use a battery to power the aircraft along with a voltage regulator. To communicate with the transmitter radio, a receiver will need to be connected to the flight controller. The flight controller is the brain of the drone and keeps the drone level. You will need four electronic speed controllers. The electronic speed controller, or ESC, allows the motors to run forward or backward. It directs power to the motor and regulates the speed of the motors. Finally, we have four propellers, two left and two right. The size of the frame will depend on the purpose of the drone. A racing drone may have a smaller or lighter frame for speed. These drones will utilize a carbon composite material. A cargo carrying drone will be larger and require a stronger frame. These drones will use a metallic structure usually made of aluminum. The payload most common on a drone will be a camera, but it could be any type of sensor or device that is put on the airframe, like a wireless network, communications relay, or even equipment for crop dusting. The payload can also be cargo. Shipping companies like Amazon, UPS, and FedEx are looking into unmanned environment to move goods from one place to another. The military has weaponized drones for over 100 years and continues to look at new and exciting ways to use the unmanned aerial systems. In the future, even commercial airplanes may fly passengers without a pilot. A drone will have some sort of propulsion system to keep it airborne. Most small UAS use propellers powered by lithium batteries. Some other UAS will be powered by a turboprop or jet engine. There are different sized batteries to choose from for your drone. It's important to know what the numbers mean on the battery pack. The first number to look at is the battery's voltage. This is specified by how many lithium polymer cells are connected in series. If the front of the battery says 3S, this means there are three cells in series. This will produce the nominal voltage of 11.1 volts. Another number to understand is the total capacity of the battery. That's usually specified in milliamp hours. This battery pack has a capacity of 6500 milliamp hours, or 65 amp hours. This means it can go from a full charge to a full discharge by delivering 65 amps for one hour. It does not tell you how much energy it will produce. For that, you need to multiply the milliamps by the voltage to get the effective energy in watt hours. Watt hours equals milliamp hours times volts divided by a thousand. The 45C on the battery is the discharge rate. This means it can discharge at 45 times its rating of milliamp hours. To know what the total current draw of your drone system is, we calculate it based on the simple formula. Max continuous amp draw equals battery capacity times discharge rate. Drive components of a quadcopter consist of a brushless DC motor, propeller, and electronic speed controller on each arm of the drone. The brushless DC motor has a KV rating. This rating determines the relationship between the motor's input supply voltage and its speed. 1900 KV means 1900 RPM per volt of input. The bigger the KV value, the faster the motor will turn. Motors that spin faster are better for smaller propellers and smaller quadcopters. Motors that spin slower are better suited for larger propellers and larger quadcopters. Propellers are a device that transforms rotary motion into linear thrust. Drone propellers provide lift for the aircraft by spinning and creating an airflow, which results in pressure difference between the top and bottom surfaces of the propeller. This accelerates a mass of air in one direction providing lift which counteracts the force of gravity. Most drones will have some level of automation and might be able to self-level, maintain altitude, or hover without any user input. Other forms of automation or autopilot include return home, follow me, flight plans, or orbits. This is programmed through the flight controller. Advanced UAS generally have sensors to help control the aircraft and track its position and movement. The UAS must have the ability to communicate with the control station and send and receive data. Control stations come in all sizes and can be large like the ground control stations the military uses or handheld like your smartphone. All control stations will do similar tasks in sharing telemetry data like airspeed, altitude, heading, and video. Commands to the UAS will be sent from the control station transmitters and received by the UAS antennas. 2.4 GHz and 5.8 GHz are two of the most common frequencies when you are dealing with quadcopters, while other drones might use satellites or even other aircraft to send signals.